Welcome to Cat the Minion YouTube channel. My name is Teresa, but you can call me Cat. I'm doing a an entity channeling. I've been putting it off for a while. Um, this is gonna be George Michael, and there there's sort of a history to what's going on with this channeling. It was about a year ago. In the fall of 2019, I, I started picking up on his energy. And, you know, it's like I've known of him. I had a couple of songs. Um, and I was like aware. I was sort of like, yeah, all right, fine. You know, not a super fan by any stretch of the imagination. Uh, but, I mean, more than indifferent, right? Like, more on the side of interest. And, uh, you know, obviously grew up with him, right? I saw him on MTV when I was little. Uh, I don't remember if I ever saw the Wham! videos that might have been like a year or so before my time. But definitely by 1987, when the Faith album came out, I definitely saw those videos. Um, so, uh, last year... I started picking up on his energy and it was starting to, it wasn't like a, like the pressure that I usually get when I have an entity that wants to come in for a channeling. It was just sort of like there and picking up on the energy and I was like, yeah, okay, okay. So I, I bought the Faith album and I was surprised because again, I said it was made in 87 and the only thing that's really dated on it is the sort of like remix club type song and the rest of it I'm like this sounds fully modern like it didn't sound that dated to me maybe it's because I don't listen to a lot of recent music because I, I cannot stand auto-tune and uh, there's just a lot of new stuff that I I have no interest in whatsoever and if something is just sort of insanely popular for no reason, I'll be like, nope. Nope. So anyway, my point is that um, I bought the album, I listened to it, I was like, wow, this is so good. And, you know, I went in, on YouTube and looked up other songs that I hadn't heard. But also there's this thing, now I don't know if autoplay on YouTube goes to um, stuff that you've already looked at. But it was happening then, it was sort of like, sometimes when I'm bored, I'll have a song that comes to mind, I'll pull up the video on YouTube, and then I'll just run it on autoplay and see what else comes up. So I would be starting with, you know, something really random, like, um, Dr. John, or, um, maybe some, like, early 60s Motown, or Simon and Garfunkel, or, um you know, Paul Revere and the Raiders, or just, you know, random, or I'd get, like, uh, you know, maybe something newer, like some pop ballad or, you know, Elton John or whatever. And within a few songs, the autoplay would go to George Michael. So I ended up listening to that duet that he did with Aretha Franklin and uh, some stuff from the 90s. I think, there, I think it was Macy Gray that he had a, a song with. You know, stuff that I hadn't really heard because uh, we didn't have MTV after about 1993. So that whole, like, middle school, high school period, I wasn't listening to, like, the new up-and-coming stuff. You know, I might hear it on the radio um, once in a while. Or just, you know, because of the zeitgeist. You know, it was before social media. So, um... You know, and I didn't really get back into listening to modern music until I did it on purpose when I went to college in 2001. So there's that whole, like, later career period that I had no contact with whatsoever. And, um... So I bought the Faith album, right? It was my era, my wheelhouse. 
I knew a couple, I knew like three of the songs on the album and the rest of them, obviously I know them now. Um, and then the, the sort of insistence of his presence went away, you know, shortly before I was at a point where I was like, okay, I need to do a channeling. And, ah, this is tight. I went, I went about my business and then, you know, his, his sister died at Christmas time and I'll, you know, for since George Burns died in 1996-ish, um, I've been getting, uh, at least I've been, that I've been aware of, I've been getting, um, like, picking up the frequencies of celebrities when they, um, when they're, they've got cancer, or they're dying, or they had a miscarriage, or they had an accident, or something like that, it just, um, you know, over and over again, and different than the celebrity, uh, sort of in the same vein, but different than the celebrity dreams that I've had, because a lot of the time it's sort of mundane things like going grocery shopping or driving by a building. Other times it's like action adventure dreams, or I'm at some charity event or a concert or whatever, um, you know, helping them escape from fans, uh, just hanging out, those kinds of things. Um, so the dreams are a little bit more involved, but then I just get the premonitions. Um, and I don't need to go through the litany of what those are. So it wasn't that unusual for me to find out a couple months after the fact that the reason I was picking up on his energy was because he had come to collect his sister. And for some reason, like I was supposed to know about it or be aware of it. Um, and then it just kind of went away again. And I've been getting these, you know, once in a while, you know, I'll go to the YouTube again. And within a few songs, it's going to be no matter what random bullshit I pick to listen to that has completely nothing to do with the genre or, or him or anything. It'll go back to George Michael. It also sometimes will be like two songs in and go to Purple Rain. And then it'll go back to George Michael. So Prince gets in there sometimes too, um, which is, you know, maybe a different story, but maybe it's related. I don't know. I might have to channel Prince eventually too, but he doesn't, like, it doesn't, I don't feel, well, I mean, I didn't feel connected to Marilyn Monroe either, and she demanded a session, so we'll see. But um, the sort of untimely death. Reminds me of, uh... Oh, Untimely Death. It was at the very end of a Beatles song, but I don't remember which one. Um... So, occasionally I've had him pop up again. Again, like when I say that the playlist just automatically goes to, to him no matter what I'm doing. Uh, but recently, in the last... Uh, month or so it's been ramping up again. I, I put the Faith CD in my car again and uh, I was watching some other YouTube uh, light work personality who's channeled a lot of entities and there's a lot of overlap between the ones that I've done and the ones that she's doing. Um, which to me was a synchronicity indicating that you know, maybe I needed to look at George Michael again, or just confirming that I'd been picking up on his energy. So I'm like, okay, well, am I supposed to do a channeling or am I just going to do it because, you know, I want to copy what this other person's doing? And I'm like, well, it's, I mean, if I get somebody bothering me for three days and they want to do a channeling, I'm not going to not do it just because you know, I don't want to be copying somebody when there's already overlap. That's goes back to readings that I, I did over a year ago when I had no idea who that person even was. So I was, I'm thinking about it. And then, um, I had this, uh, 10, 10 to 10, 7, no, 10, 11 to 10, 17 weekly overview that I was compelled to do. Um, and I got it out a little bit late, like right at midnight on the, on the 12th, but the, uh, I, I, I'm sick. 
I'm exhausted, I've got like a little bit of a flu or something. And I was sleeping and just decided to lay in bed and, and watch myself back, because you know, I haven't really watched myself back in a while. Oh, my battery's gonna die. Dang it. Um, so I was watching myself back and I had the reading that I did, I had my Rhino charm out. So I'm watching it back and I'm like, ooh, Rhino Records, I have some of their the albums they've produced, but I don't remember which ones they are, because usually when I get albums, I don't go by the company that produces them. I don't really give a shit, but I remember seeing I'm like, Rhino, what have they put out? And, uh, I'm gonna get something. Nope, 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 here it is. So, uh, so I, I'm, I'm, I fell asleep and then I, I was trying to watch the other, the second half of it and I'm like not paying attention because I was trying to Google what's, what was up with Rhino Records that I suddenly needed to look into because this is a trail of breadcrumbs that leads into why I'm doing this video tonight when I don't feel like it. Um... So I, I look them up and then I get this tip, okay, I'm going to check out and see what's selling on Amazon by Rhino. And one of the first things that came up is this. I don't even know where I got this. I like found it somewhere. Like maybe it was in a vehicle, like a used cop vehicle that my parents bought or something and I took it. Um, let's see, Rhino. Let me actually see if I can find it in my charm box. Is it, where is it? I feel pressure to hurry up because my battery is dying, but I still have... No, that's Honey Badger. There it is. Okay, so this is the charm that came out. The Rhino charm. Um, and I was like, well, what am I supposed to do with this information? Let me look up the discography and see if there's any reason that I'm supposed to be looking up Gordon Lightfoot because in the back of my mind my head is going George Michael George Michael George Michael and you know I don't know if he had anything on Rhino but apparently I was supposed to follow the breadcrumbs through Gordon Lightfoot here and um, you know I don't really know that much about him there's some songs on here that I don't like but they're the two or three that are I like I really really like the rest of them I'm either like you know indifferent or fine or like one or two that I don't like um, so, oh, Sundown, right? Because George covered Elton John's Don't Let the Sun Go Down on Me, which came up as, um, it popped into my head when I was doing a card of the day the other day. And in my, in the, in my mind, I'm like, okay, yeah, all right, George Michael again, fine. But I didn't say it because I didn't want to, uh, interrupt the reading. So, um, uh, I, I tried to look up the discography. There wasn't really any information. So then I was thinking, okay, well, what does Gordon Lightfoot have to do with George Michael? So I Googled that. And there was like, you know, when you go to Google and, and you look something up, there's like a little paragraph and you can't read the whole thing until you click on it. But it was, for some reason, it was like information. It was on Pinterest and I don't have a Pinterest account, so I couldn't read it. And it said... Um, George Michael's longtime partner Kenny Goss said that he likes something, something music. And I was like, okay, so I googled Kenny Goss and George Michael. I think it's Kenny. And, uh, and there's this article about how they were together for 13 years, and even though they broke up, he went to see him when he had pneumonia and blah, blah, blah. And I was like, okay, great. What am I supposed to do with this information? So I, I was like, oh, maybe if I Google this guy separately. So I go and I look at the Wikipedia page and I see his birth date and I'm like, okay, whatever. I don't know what that means. So he's still alive, right? I'm like, well, is he sick? Is he going to die? And I was like, I don't know. So I just Googled it at large and it, apparently this guy, uh, 
is suing, as of like two days ago, he's suing George Michael's estate for money. You know, I guess uh, he didn't... George Michael apparently didn't leave money to his love interests that he survived uh, when he died. But it's it kind of reminded me of uh, Michael Jackson because they had those two um, grifting douchebags last year who were suing his estate for money, claiming they were abused after saying they weren't. And then they had like no real evidence aside from their... Uh, child pornography fan fiction that they panned off as a documentary. And I was like, so what's going on with this guy that all of a sudden, you know, a few years after George Michael dies, he's suing his estate because he wants money or whatever. You know, that's sort of the energy that I got. And I'm sort of like, oh, okay, so last year when I was feeling George Michael's energy, he was coming because uh, he knew his sister was going to pass. And now, sort of a year later, I'm picking up on this energy because this love interest that he was with for 13 years, the number of death, transformation, transition, interestingly enough, is suing his estate for money. Uh, I don't know... What's going on there? Apparently they were both uh, abusing alcohol. Um, so I, I don't really care to... I didn't really care to dive into it because I'm like, well, if I'm going to do a channeling, I don't want to read up on it and, and know too much what's going on. So this this channeling has been sort of in the making for about a year now. And it wasn't just like pressure, pressure, you need to do a reading, but it except for when I got up from my nap after getting up late today, I got the premonition and I had to follow the trail of breadcrumbs. And of course it goes back to George Michael again. So um, apparently he has a lot to say because I picked out the stuff to use for the, for the channeling, for the reading portion um, based on what I was picking up. So I've got the box of charms here. I've got the Syrian Starseed Tarot. I've got the Morgan Greer. I've got my phrase deck here. I just heard the... Uh, give me a break! Why don't you give me a break? Yeah! And the um, Mystical Shaman Oracle. I have my... This is a pinnacle deck that I I, it's, I use it for twin flame stuff. It just means that half of the cards are labeled uh, DF for feminine energy and the other half is labeled DM for masculine energy. And that may or may not be relevant to what he's going to say, but I just really wanted some uh, four suit playing cards there apparently and not the, the bigger deck. That I've got. So I've got the Gilded Reverie Lenormand. It's not really there. It's a focus there. I've got the Lover's Oracle. Uh, did I did I pick? I don't think I picked this up already. But the Work Your Light Oracle. And I feel like he he wanted one card from this uh, Radley Valentine Angel deck and I was just gonna like sk uh, skim through it until I got the one that he wanted but I couldn't figure it out. I'm like you know what I'm just gonna shuffle it and you can have drop out what you want. But I know specifically that there's only one card coming from the Legacy of the Divine Tarot and I was like okay I know which card I want and when I picked it up it was on it was already on the bottom of the deck so that I didn't even shuffle this. Uh, and I'll flip that over in a minute when we get into the the reading. Um, I was also compelled to wear this ring. It was my grandpa's ring. It's like a art deco. And then this bracelet that is really old and that I found. And I cleaned it at one point. But it's... Oh, damn it. It's uh, gotten tarnished again. Uh, some kind of handmade... I don't know how old it is. Silver. These little 
like native looking figures. All right, uh, just hit the camera. Uh, I think I've got this pretty well focused. Um, so this card that was already on the bottom of the deck for me, it's the Knight of Cups inverted. Let me just get the single card. Okay. The Knight of Cups. Inverted. So the energy with this card... Aquarius and Pisces. I'm just going to point out that Neptune and Aquarius are currently retrograde. There's like stingrays down there in the water. I just got a little bit of Drowning in the Sea of Love by Ava Cassidy. And this card is bent. Okay. Alright, do I want to say anything about this card? He just says, tell them what it means. So, um, knights are often also called princes. It's a youthful, masculine energy, or a, a neophyte, masculine energy that is emotionally over their head in the waters. <coughs> right, it's... I'm, I'm out here tr like in my emotions and I'm, I'm sinking. It also gives the energy of the hanged man, which is also Neptune energy. So we're dealing with consciousness that's related to the world around us, but because it's also tied to Aquarius, it has to do with uh, consciousness, communication, and innovation in the material world as well. So this is this is really like um, I, I'm seeing someone with their lungs filling with water. Um, it's getting harder and harder to breathe. Okay, so that's what that card is. So let's see where else we're gonna go. Oh man, I told you I'm sick. I think part of the reason I was so sleepy today is in preparation for this reading. <laughs> I didn't know what I was gonna do until about an hour and a half ago. All right, so we're going to do the angel deck here. There's supposed to be one card coming out of this deck. And we'll see what, what George Michael wants here. It says that I'm supposed to point out that this is the Archangel Michael here on the back of this deck. Although this uh, illustrator has drawn him blonde which is not how I see him personally, but still supposed to be Michael. Okay. So this is the card that I almost did. Well, actually, it was the, I guess it was the nine that I was trying to pull off of here, but I knew it wasn't right. We have a completion here. Sun in Gemini. The end of a difficult situation. Embrace the change and expect things to get better now. Recovering from an addiction. Okay, now I did say that um, both him and that uh, Kenny Goss guy were, were both at least alcoholics, if nothing else. Was this? The Ten of Swords is the stick me, a fork in me, I'm done energy. 
Um, is there something specific you want to say about this card? You said, deep in the Garden of Eden, there's a place where people can be themselves. They don't have to worry about who they've been. Oh, I missed the first part of the sentence, but it's something about a place of dignity and honesty. They have to get to a place of decency and honesty. The trials and tribulations. Coming to a start? What does that mean? Your life really begins when you find out who you are. The shadows in the hidden places. Okay, so he's pointing out this part in the article that I I was skimming about them where it said that the Kenny Goss guy, his love interest that's now suing his estate, had this sort of prolonged situation where he was never really able to be out to his family. And there's this idea of being stunted and repressed and not able to be truly who you are, even though he was sort of living this life with George. Is there anything else for this card? It's giving me um, sort of lying in a bed of needles, but also biting the hand that feeds. There's... Uh... I feel like there's a lyric in one of the songs on the Faith album that feeds into that, but I, I don't actually know that album well enough um, to know all the lyrics to the songs that I've only been hearing for the last year. I mean, there's freedom and defeat at the same time. I'm kind of, I kind of feel like this guy that's suing him isn't going to be alive for that much longer and that's not really something that I want to predict because that's what I thought first when I went to look him up on Wikipedia I was like well when did he die or but he hasn't and I've, it's really bringing me back to that 13 years thing And I feel like, I just heard resistance to change. I don't want to speak for him, but I feel like those 13 years were more transformative for George than anything else. Right? He was outed and forced to be himself in the public eye, whereas I don't think this other guy in his day-to-day was really able to ever be himself. Is there anything else for this card? Uh, there's a vehicle going by, hold on. I was trying to um, focus in on like a visual more. I just keep hearing what you want isn't like I don't know if it's isn't always what you get or something like that. You become that which you think you want by force of willpower. It isn't always who you truly are when you look in the mirror and what do you see? It's showing me this 
this image of like um, of essentially this knight sort of th like Narcissus looking in the water but the image is changing so that their face is growing like um, crystals on it spikes and things I think that's it for that card for that deck okay. <clears throat> it's my time on here I have no idea how long this reading is going to be. There's 20 minutes of just my introduction. It's this thing on the side. Okay, don't look at it yet. Transformation. Your relationship with one another is about to deepen. Love conquers and transforms all things. So this is... This is confirming the idea that he had transformed by the 13 years of that relationship even though it seems like the relationship ended because of his substance abuse that's it's never always that simple okay so he's saying that this isn't really about the relationship with the other person it's about the relationship with the self we can see there's this um in the crosshairs between the heart and the and the soul but i just got um, the song from the 50s, like, heart and soul, I fell in love with you, heart and soul. <laughs> I don't know who sings that, and I'm not even doing it right. I don't remember who does that song. I think I have it, though. The soul is overpowering the heart. You become afraid to feel jaded by life, drowning it out, drowning out your sorrows. If you let... I was afraid to be myself. Always felt like there's something like always felt like I'm a piece of shit. But I see now in retrospect it was part of my... He's saying learning experience and soul journey at the same time because he doesn't like the terms. It's part of my expansion process. Understanding pain, that's the Ten of Swords, in order to be able to free myself from it. That's the transformation. All right, what's this other card? Kind of slipped out sideways. Okay, so here, here, the Narcissus lying in the pool. This card and this card are almost the same thing. What does it say? Emotions are a natural and necessary part of life, but they can also distort your perception and cloud your vision. In order to see things clearly, you must let go of the resentment. Okay. So, George is saying the resentment is part of why the lawsuit is coming in. I feel hurt, but I'm not allowed to look in the mirror, so I'm going to attack someone who made me feel the most in my life. And apparently their connection was enough that the guy that's suing him is emotionally attached and wants George to fix it, but George is not in the material world anymore and the only way for it to be fixed is to take what resources can be taken in this case it's money 
because the money is the only thing that's left. <laughs> right? It's left in the material world. Um, George is saying that John Lennon line, you don't take nothing with you but your soul. Right? He's taken his soul. George is over here. But the guy is still like, I'm sad. I, I, need, I need fulfillment. And... Okay, so um, George is showing me the the six of pentacles, the masculine energies, heart, open heart chakra, the the I I love by giving gifts energy. So I if I'm fulfilling myself with stuff, I I want dopamine and serotonin. I want to feel special by seeing what I have around me be bigger and in order to feel bigger I want more money. I want to feel rich but maybe emotionally not. So we get the uh, deck here. Okay so apparently these three cards that weren't coming off the table are the ones that I need. Maybe these two also. Okay, George is saying, I'm very concerned about him, you know. He wasn't like this. But then again, he was. He's saying, if I could appear to him well, then maybe it wouldn't make any difference. It's it's concerning me. I don't approve of it. He's obsessed with me. And I'm saying back to him, but I saw it in the pictures, you're in the same soul group, even though they're not, their eyes aren't the same. They have enough... Um, like similar energy in their facial structure to know that they're from the same sort of tribe. Okay, so how can he be obsessed with you if he's part of your soul tribe? He's saying he wants to be me. He wants to hold on to my energy. We're part of the same hand, but you can't be the thumb and the forefinger at the same time. You point the finger at someone else and say, this is your fault. But I am where I can touch every other finger on the hand and all they can do is come back and say, well, why aren't you giving me what I want? Okay, so this is a bonus card that I made out of one of the blanks. It says judgment, but the reverse is ludicrous speed going plaid. I just heard come and see the violence inherent in the system and I got this vision of um, Rick Moranis getting punched. Like things are violent and out of place and time seems to have moved very quickly right i don't know i don't know what year it was when george michael died somewhere like 2015 2016 i think but it's almost like he's saying that those 13 years went by really fast it's like here we are all of a sudden and also this idea that like he's saying incarnation is kind of a farce. You know, if you're going to be down here doing the show, you may as well be as camp as possible, because otherwise what's the point? You know, he said, 
He knows that I watch a lot of drag queen material, so he's saying pop on a lot, pop on a lash and make it a spectacle. <laughs> and then he's showing me a picture of, um, like an image of uh, one of Freddie Mercury's decadent parties, like in that uh, music video there. Oh, here's the other blank card. Temperance and then the Eight of Wands. I know it looks like a carrot, but it's it's a wand. Um, so ludicrous speed and fast movement. But also like this infinite loop. Judgment and temperance inverted as a background energy. Okay. So we have the Jack of Pentacles. So this is what I was talking about. I was seeing the six of Pentacles. This is like double that. It's also inverted, relevant to feminine energy. This is a, a 1 or an 11. I'm not in touch with my feelings. I'm going downhill quickly. Why isn't what I want manifesting? So George is pointing out that this isn't just talking about how he's got someone suing his him. He says, this isn't just why I've got someone suing me for money. He's saying me as if he's still alive, but it's technically his estate, his family. Um, I, just, I see his sister coming into the, he's like in I, like the way I do the um, the channelings I feel like I'm in a radio station booth and I'm doing a podcast so he's in the booth and his sister comes in behind him and she's like I don't like it either so now we have <laughs> this is her <laughs> sneaking in behind him I don't like it either because she's coming in upright look at this expression she's like what the hell, man? Some whack ass shit. 13. Sagittarius and Capricorn. This is Sagittarius energy, too. Ace of Cups. Masculine energy inverted here, though. Again, it's the idea of what you think you want isn't really who when you think you want something and you focus only on what you want and saying this is what I want in my heart just by dictating it like I'm going to I want this in like I want this with my hands I'm going to hold on to it because I want it this means that I love it this is the one true thing that will make me happy. But the reality is that these masculine energies inverted end up sort of... Um... He's showing me the guy with a dog collar on in a run on the yard, like chasing after this paper heart um, until he runs out of chain and chokes on it like that bulldog in those cartoons from the Mary the... Looney Tunes. You know, enough rope to hang yourself with. Ooh. Oh, please don't tell me he's going to do that. I don't want to have that kind of premonition. That's not cool. That is not cool. Oh, that just made me ill. Like, how am I supposed to put this video out when I get that kind of imagery popping into my head? He's trying to calm me down. He's like, no, 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 that's not what I meant. That's a different timeline. That's There's other universes where that's happening. Just because you can see something doesn't mean that you're the one who's doing it. Oh, his sister's leaving the booth now. Oh, okay, okay, okay. She's the one... Okay. 
she's really his sister is really indignant about it and it's, it's sort of created that image as a way to cope with her own anger over the situation <sighs> she's a little bit more queen of swords than queen of pentacles there okay Okay, I don't know whether it's the Lenormand or the Mystical Shaman, so I gotta lay these cards down at the same time before turning them over. 11 minutes, 11 seconds when I looked at the clock on the camera. This is a lot darker than I thought it would be. I don't know if I finished what I was saying before when he was saying um, this isn't just about this, he said this reading this session this interview isn't just about what's going on related to me and he said and Ken I don't know if that's what he called him but that's what he said right now it's isn't just between what's going on between me and Ken it's um, themes for a wider, a wider blueprint. He's showing me a city grid. Just like songs mean something, just like songs are subjective for whoever hears them what it means for me when I write them and when I play them isn't always what it means for someone who hears it. I can be talking about what it's like to be gay and someone else can s talk about what it it's like when their grandmother dies or when they He's saying when they don't get into the college that they want to, and I, that doesn't make sense, but I think he's referring to what I said in my weekly overview about the letter. There's a way that text can be read out in a tone that's not intended, but art can be subjective, whether you're looking at something it can be either scary or mysterious or comforting depending on your mood when you see it. I don't think you really want four cards for that, do you? See, so flips out a whole bunch of them. Don't flip out on me, bro. Oh, okay. I'm having such a hard time focusing on George's face in the booth to try to get what he's saying more clearly. Because I was, for some reason, I was seeing him from like 1997 with that weird like, uh, like handlebar goatee situation. And I think it's funny that I think it's weird. Um... And then I'm seeing him like older with gray hair, with his head almost shaved. And that image sort of flipped immediately into him from Wham! with the, uh, you know, the short shorts and the huge puffy hair. And for some reason, he's saying like the whole time that I wasn't getting stuff as clearly in this interview, he keeps calling this an interview, um, is that I'm supposed to see him as he was in Wham! Which is weird because I like his other music better. <laughs> and he's, I, I, I'm, I think there's some, uh, the Wake Me Up Before You Go Go song, um, 
I think he he put the other guy in Wham's name down as a co-writer so he'd get money from it even though he didn't actually co-write it. It was one of the numerous charitable things that he did in his life. I, I, don't quote me on that, but I feel like there's this idea of sort of fun and, and playfulness, but also um, trying to be able to express yourself in ways when you, when you don't have the words or the clarity to uh, be flagrantly authentic everywhere you are. But it's sort of coded, not coated, as in it's got paint on it, but coded as in, uh, like, um, you know, traffic lights. <sighs> code red, code green, code purple. Speaking of, okay. <sighs> All right, so this one here. telling me colors but he's not telling me which card. He's like purple, pink one, another pink one. And then he flips out that orange one instead. He says it looks pink from where he's sitting. You colorblind? Is that why you wear the sunglasses all the time? Does anybody know? Was he colorblind? Ooh. Okay. Think he's done with this deck yet he likes the colors and this my phrase deck is made out of all these uh cards here so that's a green one in the middle not telling me which green one though just got a a little bit uh from the movie the shadow it was like this one's green that's red this Ian McKellen's character was colorblind, or, or he might not have actually been colorblind in that movie. He was just like so like idiot savant that he kept mixing up what green and red were. Did I already use the Lenormand? I don't remember using the Lenormand. But it's got the band on it. Is there some under here? No. It's kind of freaking me out a little bit. This one I used. These ones I used. This one I used. These ones I have not used. Okay. Freaking me out, man. That's a lot. He had a lot to say with all these decks, and I have no idea how many cards I'm getting out of all of them either. Since every day is a sunny day, what's a sunny day? Let the rain come in. So giving me this like parting of the clouds, like um, like a fall from heaven, or just sort of gracefully gliding down the stairs to come back and then tripping and falling down the stairs in order to descend back into this plane. Again, very camp, very farcical. And he's like... He's showing me this picture. I think it's of the Great Pretender, the Freddy radio, where he's walking down the stairs. And he's showing me, like, what if Freddy had just fa tripped and fallen down the stairs? And I'm like, well, isn't that kind of mean? But apparently, in spirit, it's funny. 
it's like it's like <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna tell Freddie you said that like they have their own relationship there okay um what's okay so what's over here ah uh, I had to stop at 176. I think this is the heart. 24. I think this was kind of upside down though, but there this one has a jack of hearts on it, so it was like that jack of pentacles mixed with the ace of hearts. Oh, okay. He's saying that this is these two cards together. And I'm, I'm feeling my heart, but I'm also deep under the water. It's this mirror world here. It's, he's, it's like he's, he's saying that him coming in to demand his session finally now he's like I wanted to come in and what is, he's saying sin is what is his sister's name because that doesn't sound right I gotta look this up real quick because I don't know what her name is Hang on, I gotta look this up a little bit more. This is weird. Oh! Oh! Hold on. It's not saying what her middle name was. He was saying something to me like when Sin died, as if her name was like Cindy, like like C Y N is a nickname, but her name was Melanie. But this, the thing I was just looking at, said she died of a broken heart, and then it was later found out to be like insulin shock, which is interesting because um, some people who say that. Um, People who have diabetes is a psychosomatic illness having to do with a lack of sweetness in their life. Like people who are, it, it, similarly, but diff, like people who are addicted to sugar are trying to fill an emotional void of sweetness. And in the same way, people like in the opposite spectrum, people can end up diabetic from the same emotional issue. But I feel like I feel like he's saying that he has to stop. Wait, hang on, let me listen to him. I'm distracted by his teeth. They're so pointy. Um, especially with the poofy hair, he looks like a a beach bum vampire. 
she thinks is funny. Um, slash werewolf because of the beard. He's like, oh, you're getting me back now for what I said earlier about Freddy on the stairs. He doesn't want to see people around him succumbing to heartbreak. And, you know, it, it might be um, that this guy that's suing his estate, again, he the only way that he can have emotional fulfillment is by getting something, what's left of George, in this case, the estate itself, which was essentially made out of money. But um, uh, apart from that concept, he knows that there's a deeply rooted sadness where there's an emotional fulfillment that's not being met. And that's what he wants to stop, is the heartbreak that leads to distorted behavior or distorted physical wellness in the material world. And, and he's saying it's not, it's not specific to my situation and the people that I love. It's a problem in society. Um, he's showing me the like a closed throat shocker. He's saying people can't speak up about who they are and their feelings. Which is why there's this constant state of drowning. I can't breathe. I need something to stay afloat. Give me things, give me stuff, give me sugar, give me sweets. Uh, getting, giving me the Archie's song, Sugar Sugar. Okay. Honey, sugar, sugar. You are my candy girl and you got me going now. I think I was hearing... I was getting like a premonition of candy and seeing it as sin because the letters are similar. This is this is how this works. Here. That's what I was seeing. Um. Synthetic candy makes me feel like I've gotten ingested something sweet makes me feel good inside stimulates my brain dopamine serotonin okay. Hit, part of his mission is to end this cycle of emotional trauma by ingesting substances or by hoarding in some way. He's saying, I went through the addiction in my life as a pattern, this thir and, and again, the 13 years specifically with this other guy who also apparently alcoholism. Um, I was living with a mirror that whole time, even though this was present, it was so I could see myself in someone around me. And He's indicating that's probably where that's where a lot of their arguments came from. It's like the pot calling the kettle black. He says, "Get some charms now." Okay. I don't. I need to. I need a kettle charm. I don't have one. Okay. Some charms. Honey badger's looking at me. Oh, speaking of sweetness, honey. There is a bowl of sugar in here. I don't know if it's going to come out, though. I have a tea cup, but I don't have a tea kettle. That's interesting. I do have a frying pan, though. Get it off the other side. Put 
put it out the other oh, right here. Turn this around. I saw the whale trying to come over. I'm like, I don't want the whale again. He's like, I'm going to throw it over there just to spite you. It's a little bit of mischievous energy here. We did throw out the honey bagger. We done? Yeah, we're done. So I was just saying, honey, honey. This is, I'm going to attack, right? I'm going to try to take from you to have what I want because I don't care anymore. And I've got a bunch of stuff in reverse here, but let's see. I've got the, okay. Look at these holly berries here. This is just indicating that, that George died at Christmas time and his sister as well. The telephone ring. Uh, and I, he's showing me a dial tone. Like he's trying to bring messages down to people on Earth. You know, like it's not just me and the other reader that, that's, that pick up on his energy. He's sort of... You know, he's in a place where he's sort of like a multi-dimensional being and even though he's he's still sort of limited by <laughs> showing me falling down the stairs again. It's like when when you come out of the higher dimensions to interact with people on Earth, it's it's basically like tripping and falling down the stairs. You lose some of your faculties. But he's still like he's trying to connect with certain people and it's like they he's like paging so and so this is george michael uh come and listen to my music and let me try to get you some certain energy and and there there's just nothing the person is just sitting there uh completely detached from their emotions unable to pick up on universal messages and he's trying to talk to them and all he gets back is that like Doo! of the of the dial tone or like a computer where it's, you know, like a fax machine sound, like the modem dial up where it's like a, you know, like a robot being murdered. Like, whatever. It's been a while since I heard that. It just makes me think of AOL with a dude. Oh, I'm dig a charm out of here if I can find it. It's so much harder to find them now. And I got like oh, almost 200 of them in here. Although I started with 150, but that last batch really filled the box up. I gotta find it though. Pants. Give me a break, why don't you give me a break? Yeah. I have no idea how long this reading is gonna be. I've sort of given up on time as a construct for the last week. Like work until four in the morning and then sleep until midday and here it is and try to do day things and it just an AOL guy there walking away oh the dial up okay yes walking. and it goes in that when I was saying um code like coding like on a traffic light code red there's this gecko just saved 15 I just saved money on my car insurance for 15 minutes on the gecko um this to me I've, especially with this gecko here I've got it zoomed in kind of on his hand there uh, cuz he's got those like sticky texture hands so he can climb up stuff so this is you know uh, like uh, and geckos are tend to be sort of semi aquatic I think they're amphibious they're a little bit like smoother, shinier, nudier, like newt. Uh, I feel like they need to stay near the wet more than other reptilians do. So there's this idea of I'm stuck on something, but I, I need to maintain closeness to the waters, to the frequency. And it also looks like he's trying to turn the dial. I'm trying to get up, trying to pick up the radio signal. Like, what frequency are you on, man? Stop using this bandwidth. This is Capricorn. Or Venus, depending. 
it but right now i'm seeing that it's the world it's saturn energy right three planets in saturn right now is trying to tune the world into this frequency of opening up to your emotions and who you really are so that you have better connectivity to the universe he's he's really showing me like drowning in alcohol and how is like he he's he's like it's it's time for for me to make a stand so other people don't have to go through that but this watch is one of these inverted charms here also inverted the yin yang symbol the eight ball, the hand with a ring on it. The penguin, Arctic chill, toque, tetrahedron, the Seesaw of children, basically the inner child. Oh, come on, get in there. The candelabra. It's giving me Liberace energy. Oh, and the thermometer. All right, so th we've got a chill here. Okay, hold on, slow down. <clears throat> okay. The feeling of being left out in the cold stems back to childhood where you couldn't be who you really are. It's... It, it, oh. The very foundation of your life is based on not having balance of not being able to be committed to your true self of you know you're not able to connect with all parts of you and you're constantly you're in this eternal loop of asking for approval and instruction from other people when you don't need to consult someone or deal with some external source to tell you who you are and what you're doing He says it's really important. Uh, some sort of national coming out day. Um, more and more people are going to find that in order to balance themselves and be who they truly are, they're not going to fall within to these strict lines of spectrum, like delineations of color, right? I'm walking this crosswalk here because the stripes are too far apart. I'm leaving. I'm going to where there's more of a a blend, right? It was like with the eyeshadow brush. You got to blend that shit out. All right. Okay. I have no idea where I left off. I had to wander around for a minute. Okay. Um, let me get back into it here. Got crap all over my glasses. <gasps> okay. A new view of reality, awareness of distortions, 271. And this is what he's talking about. I want to help people. I want people to be aware that this is going on. This, the distortion of being out of touch with your emotional content, of ignoring it and just trying to drown it out with different things, trying to fill up that hole with concrete. So the moon in Lenormand is about getting, sometimes about recognition being a star 
I see five, which is a pivot. That's that shift, that change in reality. Eight of cups, walking away from that which no longer serves you. Saturn and Pisces. So we're seeing that Piscean energy and that Saturn energy again. You're just giving me a little bit of a walk away with Christina Aguilera. It's like, I don't want to be famous for... Um, He's like, I don't want to be famous for walking out on life. It's like he thinks that people remember him just because he died, but he wants people to remember him for more for what he did than that he's no longer here. And then he just gave me a little bit of don't let the sun go down on me, which is interesting because it's a moon card. Let me be famous for turning the tides, for changing the direction that things are going in. 5 and 8, 13 again. Ancestral rites of passage, okay? It's, it's like he's saying as part of his... <laughs> he's stopping me there. He's like... I don't say it's like I'm saying. Wait for me to actually say it. I got a little excited. I'm used to just reading, reading from the cards. Okay. Ancestral rites of passage. I'm starting to gain some insight. 13 again, and here's a 9. I can change who I've been in the world by changing who I am now in, in the ether, in the ethereal world, without a body. Freedom. He said Freedom 90. There's a song he has. I don't know how it goes, but he's just giving me the title. Freedom. There's a lot of songs where people are screaming freedom. Aretha Franklin, Adam Lambert. Um, not screaming, but, you know, really belting it out. But there's there's this idea of, of freedom, of pushing it out of your body, of, um, well, until you don't have a body, he's saying. Um, part of what I'm doing here gives me the right to be hailed as an ancestor. I'm learning more about what I'm doing now, just like people who are still in alive he says I'm, and I'm trying to interject incarnate he's like people who are still alive can start to have a new view of the awareness of the distortions he said like we're all learning together remember me for what I can do now than for what I already did to He's not telling me, he's showing me this idea of like a, a table full of all his songs. And when people pick them up and listen to them, they're not going to hear who he was then. The messages are going to be altered so they can hear who he is now. Oh, that's. I feel like it's giving me tinglys, but it's like it's not, I'm not feeling it in a sensation. It's like. There's a th like a layer of my soul far above me that's getting tingles and it's just telling me in my brain like a like a fax machine popping up. It's like tingles. And I'm like, OK, <laughs> it's not like somebody came in and threw a bucket of ice on me and made me shiver. It's just like we have a report coming down from above that the uh, the board members have tingles. <laughs> 
funny. Okay, what else have you got here? Oh, we got it. The Lower World. Oh my god! 31 breaking down to, f which could be 13, but it also breaks down to 4, which is that foundational number, like the tetrahedron. The Lower World. This is where he's he's working, right? He's saying, this is, from where I am, is how Earth is now. But for people on Earth, the Lower World is where they won't go into their feelings. There's different... Uh, different scales of what it means. Oh, ooh, ah, mm. 31 lower world. I'm getting excited now. <laughs> you know. Mm -hmm. Okay, he wants me to read this. The lower world holds the hidden treasures of humanity. It's a place of rich and fruitful darkness where we can find the disowned parts of ourselves and the abandoned aspects of our psyches. That's what's trying to be covered up by that heart, heartbreak, sweetness, uh, fulfillment, addiction. The, ah, the lower world is the place of our ancestors, where we discover the gifts and lessons from the past. It's the realm of the collective unconscious. That's a Neptune energy. Here we can meet our demons and transform them into pure energy or source of personal power, right? So it's like by learning how to be pure energy, he's gaining more power. Do not make yourself small scales in order for others to accept, to like or accept you. Bring out the gems and the precious stones that you have kept hidden inside your heart, even from yourself. It's time to honor your past and recast your life as a heroic quest. As you journey into the lower world, you'll be offered all the gifts of your ancestors. Their struggles, the way they hurt, the way they lived, and the way they died will become blessings. So he's saying that he's not going to... He's like, I'm not going to be remembered just for having died or for who I was then. Who I am now is going to transform the message that I'm given in that in that way he becomes an ancestor. Ooh. Ooh, that's profound and shit. Oh now he's 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 like I am the owl now. I bring the message. Seven of Pentacles. That's one step above that six. That's starting to grow, but it's taking a long time instead of just where's my stuff? Notice it came out a little bit upside down, right? Because this impatience. But he's with the owls now. He's got this moon energy. Ah. The smoky mirror. Okay, so we started out with this Narcissus energy, right? 47 breaking down to 11. Four, that foundational number with the seven, right? Trying to have some patience. This is like, I'm looking in the mirror and I'm not ignoring my face because I don't want to look at my feelings. I'm going to let the cloud, the darkness envelop me, which is one of those other aspects. Let me read this. I try to see if he wants to say anything because that was just me talking and he's sitting back for a minute and he's like, no, you go with it for a minute. He wants to see what I'm going to say. He's like, I'll jump in in a minute when I got something. Smoky mirror represents the aspects of what is implied yet cannot be immediately known in the world. The mystery of how things come together and how they fall apart without obvious causality. Right? Where it's like it took months and months for them to find out that his sister died specifically of the diabetes. Or that his life is falling apart and he was outed. He's showing me that scene. Symbol also represents the shadow of the human psyche. Again, that human psyche shadow. The parts of itself that one disowns, right? I'm I'm not I'm ignoring it. I'm gonna drown it. My inner self is dead to me. Thirteen death. The smoky mirror can also represent a state of denial or the inability or refusal to see the truth. You're invited to see beyond your own self, the past acknowledge that the oh my god acknowledge that past the limits of your current ability to perceive right he wants people to open up their consciousness they in that dial tone there's a vast interconnected world where events are orchestrated in divine order but challenging to fully grasp 
Now's the time to trust that no matter what the current conditions of your world reflect, in the hidden realms all aspects of the human journey are celebrated. The beauty and the darkness, the misery and the courage. He's, he's saying, if I had more courage in my life, think of where I would have been when I left. No matter where you are in your journey, know that some things are meant to be a mystery, which you are meant to understand only through experience. Take heart, for the smoky mirror will ultimately show you beauty and wonder once the fog lifts the distortion. I mentioned distortion. You see now. Okay. So those really go well together. It's... Um, do you want to say anything else about this? He's saying it's all smoke and mirrors. He's talking about the entertainment industry. You know, a lot of it's a smoke screen. And the importance in the message. Sometimes the the original messages were intentionally distorted. He's, he's, he's showing me, like, the record companies messing with the sound or, like, um tweaking the mix in order to um, make people more addicted to buying the music. And he's saying that even that's part of the smoke and mirrors and the distortion, but even if, if people listen to that music now, the way that he's changing his message, he's performing his own act of smoke and mirrors from his own position and saying like, I'm changing the vibration of that which was previously distorted in the same way that people can act on their life and what they've done, right? Just because you, you don't have uh, your feelings recorded um, on cellulose or, you know, there it's not like a, a nickel platter in a vault somewhere um there's a, a recording of your events in your memory in other people's memories and when you you change your vibration it has an effect on the the past you change the recording so that when it's replayed the mem the the memory comes out different it it's he's saying warp speed he's going back to that ludicrous speed card right things are changing quickly um because people understand what the message means so they there might be something in the music that was done to make it, to intentionally make it distorted or to veil what was really being talked about because in the end it matters what people are perceiving and not necessarily what they're hearing. So when people perceive events in your past or in their past in a different way, it sort of lifts the fog and opens up that gateway to the to their own underworld, to their own lower world, where they've got their true self, uh, you know, shackled to the castle wall deep in the oubliette or whatever, lower, you know, lowering a bucket and telling them to put the lotion on their skin. <laughs> This one. Okay. Okay, still Get a couple of Lenormand and uh, not Lenormand. Morgan Greer. There we go. Get that ore sound in the middle. Really? Ugh. surprised to see that that came out in my weekly overview he's 
he's like, yeah, yes, I know I'm piggybacking off of your weekly overview reading. Who do you think made you do it? <laughs> I just said, you bastard, and then he's laughing. You, oh my god. I'm not saying that out loud. I am not quoting South Park in this reading after that other shit earlier. It's a Knight of Swords, but I'm not supposed to keep that out. Trying to get in with the truth there. Like, not hiding the truth from yourself. This is a big old heap mess here, this one. That one. I swear to God, he's got a lot to say. I don't know if he was real chatty in real life or if he just kept everything in. He's like, I'm not telling, it's the smoky mirror. Okay, what do we got here? <clears throat> the Great Gathering. It's all coming together, intuitive hits, soul tribe. It makes it harder when you don't know when someone you encounter is in your soul group. You have to be connected to yourself enough to know the difference between where you stop and where someone else begins. Where's that? Where you stop and where someone else begins. It's he's giving me this sort of imagery of a, like him fighting with the Kenny guy there and this sort of like infringement on his personal space where it's like do you love me or are you just obsessed with me and then I heard a little bit of this song like if you love her then you let her go is that James Morrison or is that someone else But it's like, I'm, I'm not going to, I'm not going to subserve my identity to your needs as if consuming me will fulfill your heart space. And then more alcohol to drown the gulf between us. Interesting. Okay. Birthing a new age. Birthing new creations, dreaming a new world into being. So there's a portal there. Yes, just say yes. Okay, let me... Three of Cups. Now this came out this way. Yes to downloads, no more drinking and partying. Threefold goddess. Maiden, mother crone. Oh, okay, birthing a new age, right? It's it's like the, in the middle of the threefold goddess, the mother. Yes, and I'm giving birth. And it, notice how this is coming out, like it's coming out of her lower regions because it's inverted. George is smiling. He's pleased with that analogy there.
Did you want to say anything about these cards? You got a lot of fucking cards out here, George. I don't know what you may say. He's giving me party all the time and too much love will kill you, but he's trying to say that too much partying will kill you and it's not the drink that'll do it. It's not... Um, he says it's not your liver that you have to worry about, it's your soul. Can't take nothing with you but your soul. Don't let the sun go down on me, I saw that. It's like illumination. When you're secure in yourself, the solar chakra, then you can be with other people. You're able to recognize your soul tribe. It's not about uh, being sunny or never, always being happy. It's about being in tune with your core. Who am I really? This one. Sisterhood of the Rose, Beauty and Devotion, Mystic Teacher. Priestess. And I think this is goes with these three ladies over here. That's the crone aspect. Star Mother, how can you mother yourself? Okay, so there's one of them, and there should be a third one. Maybe it's this. Call back your power, cut the cord, soul retrieve it, right? Where do you end and where do I begin? It's this over here. Align your life. What is not aligned or needs to change? Okay. Like, this is, again, that looking in the mirror. Like, I'm going to break the mirror because I don't like what I see. There, oh, let me see if I can find it. Where the hell's my shit? Where's my shit? Battery's done charging. I think it's in here. Here's the death card right next to it, looking very similar. I have a poem in here that... I can't remember which one it is. It's been a while since I looked in here, and most of these I wrote in like 2011. Oh, I know what it is. I know which one it is. I just need to... It's called Chamber of Mirrors. Maybe if I look in the Tableau of Contents. Oh, it's just by section. God damn it. Well, it'll only take me a minute to find it. Hold on. I have this on Kindle as well, finally. Should still be formatted correctly, hopefully. Where is it? Where's the one I want? Hmm. This is mostly Dark Knight of the Soul stuff. Okay, so here we go. Page 51, Chamber of Mirrors. <clears throat> I am the mutable moon. I stretch my glass in waves caught between the earth and rocks and the wet deep. I absorb all your emotion. Your love, your hate, your desire, sadness, ire, passion. Take that away and perhaps all that remains are smoky mists inside the crystal ball. My mist is mine. Don't blame my facets if you don't like what you see. Breaking the glass won't change your face. Okay. My turn. I'm like, I'm like tongue tied from that even. I'm trying to get back to him in the booth and, and what he wants to say. He's sort of morphing back into the older him now with the gray clipped hair. He says, I'm being the crone. <laughs> so I've learned how, I've learned how to nurture myself. It was a little too late, but I still learned. 
priestess mystic teacher. That's what the crone does because she's learned and wise. Okay, so emotional balance is how to keep your head or the hell your head above the water here. Thirteen, thirteen years. The is it the thirteenth today? Tomorrow's the th well. It'll be the thirteenth by the time I'm done doing this reading. Forty-five minutes till the thirteenth. <clears throat> Pluto energy. Resurrection. The Knight of Wands and the Two of Wands. There's that crystal ball. This is the ego showdown, right? Your ego has had time to build itself up. And here you are, not sure if you can face it. I don't know. And I've got to make a choice. Number two, choice. Total being 14, balance, trying to align, alignment. Scorpio and Sagittarius combined with Mars in Aries. So that Mars retrograde in Aries is doing this as well right now, but it's all part of a larger plan to help people be into their emotions. He's... <clears throat> George is saying... I know it's part of the patriarchy. I feel like I've participated in it, even as a gay man. And part of the smoke and mirrors is making sure that you're masculine enough to pass. And that's not just for... for when you're gay, it's... To be a certain way to pass in society, to be accepted, to be holding up to the standard, to shove down your emotions and be the mirror and, and to be the smoke in the mirror and not the piece of silver behind it. Oh, the silver. And look at this, all these faces, all these little faces. Let me take this off because it's also bothering me. All these little faces are all different shards of the mirror. It's heavy too. Okay. Ah, oh, it feels freedom. I feel the freedom deep in my bones. Okay, where are we going? This is the page of cups. Much like this knight here. But here they're they're in actively in the process of diving. They've just splashed through the water. And here they're like, oh crap, I'm mid too deep. There's a song lyric that's I'm in too deep, but I don't know where it's from, and I'm getting the scene in Dirty Dancing where they're practicing the lift. Which is gonna be the lift. Saturn and Leo inverted. Don't let the sun go down on me. This is that conflict, that inner conflict. I'm going to fight with you and take from you because I'm not feeling myself inside. But I'm also going to uh, be at war with myself until I can learn to transform into a place where I can have this inner fire but start to love myself. I'm learning. I've got to unlock the information. Now the Ten of Pentacles is on here, right? The in, like the learning and information is how you're going to get this uh, contentment and safety in the material world. It's not by taking, it's by expanding your understanding. The princess was at first frightened to see a lion. 
So that's that Leo energy. They've been asked to cooperate with you. This sounds too good to be true. too funny. I want to see what these other phrase cards are over here. Reconnect with ancestors, aka shamanic lore. Head in a pile of dead leaves, asleep to reality and willful ignorance. Oh man. Oh, where's that as of the book? There we go. Oh, this is a double here. A mansion made of bits of miscellany. It's up here too. I'm only part way up this mountain, but the view is already grand. Okay. I feel like there's something else that goes with this cooperation here. Maybe it's this one. Thunder. This is getting that download from the ancestors, 56 breaking down to 11. It's like, you're not answering my phone call. I'm going to beat down your door. The Time Master, 57. George is saying, that's me. There I am. There's an importance with this eight here, this infinity symbol. The princess is the same in some decks as the seeker, the page, the princess. I am afraid to see the lion. I'm afraid to see the sun disk. I'm afraid to see my solar center. And I don't even want to get into my emotions. Right? I'm going to be willfully ignorant of my emotions. George is saying, I'm asking... You, collectively you, y'all, I'm asking everyone here to cooperate with me, to understand this information I'm trying to lay out. It may seem like a bunch of fragmented bullshit, but this is, he's saying, this is the real T. The tr he's saying this is the true T. Because he knows that's how... He, he says, I know the lingo. I'm aware of the language. Ah, the lilies. King of Swords. Where was the... Okay, yeah. This one that flashed is the Knight of Swords. It wasn't meant to stay out. This card has the King of Swords in the bottom. This is the lilies. The differentiation between the real flowers and the fake ones that are bound in the glass. And the glass being synonymous with the mirror. Right? The, I, the real flowers seek the light. They need water to grow. The ones that are fake are might be pretty, but they're stuck in the same position for the rest of eternity. Shielding you, because it's a smoky mirror, because it's frosted glass and textured from what's behind it, from what's really there. This is opening up to what reality is and isn't. But let me get into the Time Master. Let's see what George wants about this one. That's me, I'm the time master. I'm in and out of time, but what I do now changes the time that came before. Time is a construct of the human mind through which life events are seen to flow in a straight line from past to future. This, however, is an illusion. Time moves in patterns, fractals, sometimes turning like a wheel and other times moving straight as an arrow. 
Humans see time like a ticking clock, and this image reminds us that there is only so much of it to spend in life. A kind of currency. Oh my god, give me the money! I'm running out of time, give me the money instead. At any given moment, you can see time in all its infinite potential. Infinite potential is the eight. Right there, he's got a little eight. Some, was it something I ate? Because it's right in his like trachea stomach area. Infinite potential, at once vast and all-encompassing and then shrunken and finite. It all depends on perspective. I was at first frightened to see a lion. This seems too good to be true. I don't want to go in there. Will, the Time Master visits you, he asks the most important question. Will you break free from limited cause and effect thinking by moving beyond the linear illusion and welcoming the cyclic quality of time? You find yourself in a moment when the wheel of time turns and you're able to influence the past, thus changing the present and future simultaneously. This is the true test of the Time Master. You're being invited to take back your power. What the fuck was that? What the fuck was that? Uh, yeah. I take back your power. So let go of the past and choose to step into your life. In this moment, you are all powerful. You are the time master. Anything is possible now. Oh my god, I... Okay, where's the... So I'm reading this out of the book, right? This is the book that I'm reading. Right. Textually active tonight. And I'm laughing when I'm reading these because this is this they're they're just clarifying what's already coming out. So I've got okay, so this ring came out. Commitment to self and others. So I have the ring that I started with, I have the telephone ring, I had the hand little um hand with the ring charm. And we have this ruby ring here with the ace of wands, right? The core fire the ultimate drive, the modus operandi, the sole purpose. Two and five, that's the high priestess that was the crone over there. And the five, we see the five here inverted pivot, but it's also that hierophant, that cosmic download. And uh, yes, I'm going to read the ring. Hold on. A ring of endless light. He's saying there. It's an eclipse where the sh there's a shift between the light and the dark. The portal opens between worlds. And he's not just talking about the ability for spirits to come into the physical world, but also for people to access this sort of time space and go into their inner world where they can affect what's happened in their past instead of just uh, avoiding it. Um, he's reminding me of, um, the Monty Python Australian wine sketch, where, I don't remember which one it was, but it was, um, this is lot, not a wine for drinking, this is a wine for laying down and avoiding. <laughs> uh, okay. A precious item is what I am to bind in marriage and commitment. I bring harmony and unions as long as negative cards are afar. I am the contract and the promise in partnerships and ventures. I am the symbol for completion and the form of eternal devotion. I'm supposed to bring a reward. Ruby symbolizing commitment. Rubies are a guarantee of economic stability in some cultures was buried in the foundations of buildings to assure good fortune. Now that um, economic stability was also that ten of pentacles that popped up over here with the information. But it, it, that way it just means more like um, 
your manifestation is going to be more abundant because you're tapped into nurturing yourself. The ring is a symbol of commitment and can speak of a contract being drawn up between two people or business partners. The ring is an object of value to those who wear it. Now, that it's like it only has value in certain places, right? It like if I when I brought this to a pawn shop, they're like it's only worth 15 bucks and I'm like, well, sentimental value of it's worth a lot more than 15 bucks, right? So the money may have value to you, but it doesn't have value to your soul. That's the kind of thing. It's like um, your memories and traumas and emotions that you are suppressing have value, even though you don't think they do. Gonna work here late. Trust your path. If you knew you would be supported, what would you do? That has that's that commitment again. That's Venus with the Ace of Swords. The sarcophagus, Nine of Pentacles. With an eight. And the letter, Seven of Swords. This... Your, your f false contract, there's a sickness. You need to look out the window into this environment and realize that this self-nurturing energy of your true self will open up your path to you forward and you won't have to rely on this sort of sneaky energy of trying to communicate something that's eventually going to make you sick even if you think it's going to bring you what you want for yourself. So page of Pentacles. So I have Pentacles with the nine and now I have an eleven or a one. Seven of Swords in reverse, right? We're not going to be sneaky about it. Seven of Wands, I'm letting my guard down. I'm going to stop uh, aggressing to protect. And the Knight of Cups here, finally upright. I notice that there's this in learning to tread your emotional waters, your manifestation starts to come in as well but only when you're in your solar center. These cards, gaining balance by releasing that, the behaviors that are blocking you, um, 14, helps bring this in. Now this is a one or a 12, this is a one or an 11. So I see this sort of ramping up 11, 12, 14, but also um, this idea that this could be 11, but it could also be 11 and 12. Three and two, breaking down to five, there's a shift, there's that high priestess energy, but also um, 11 and 3 is 14 which is balanced so there's there's a great balancing out and it's not just events that are happening for George to make a point that he doesn't like what he's seeing with his uh, soul group buddy down there who's suing his estate because he knows that means that he's not probably not doing the inner work that he needs to have the emotional healing and you know 13 years of not being able to fully open up emotionally and then realizing that it's coming up as a cyclical problem is more hurtful more concerning he's saying it's more concerning than the fact that he's trying to 
take f from the materials that I left behind. He's more concerned. He's like, it, it makes me worry. It, see, the worry isn't really the thing because the worry means you're siphoning the energy off of yourself and you're taking on someone else's problem. It's, it's a deeper concern to be out here doing the work to try to communicate to people. He's saying they're thick as shit. And he doesn't mean they're stupid. He means that the smoke is so thick in the mirror and they're so... Like, he's, he's showing me murky water. The water of their emotion is so dank, so uh, rancid. It's, uh, he's showing me a tray in, in uh, the never ending story where the horse gets stuck in the mucky stuff and doesn't come out. Those are the emotional waters when you avoid them and just keep throwing. It's like, he's like, you pollute your environment. Your emotions can be sort of crystal clear waters that you can swim in. Where's that card? Where's that? There was one that was, where is it? Can you find it? This one? That doesn't look very watery. Hold on. I thought there was one that had water in it. I guess this one has water in the background. These crystal clear waters that you can swim in and bask in and all that. And uh, when you when you try to block yourself from the emotion, it's like every time I would drink a bottle, if I threw the bottle into my emotions as if I were throwing it into a lake and just heaped all of this garbage, all of my candy wrappers, all of my half-eaten uh, biscuits. I don't know if he's saying biscuits because he's showing me a sandwich. Um... He says, all of my half-eaten sandwiches into this lake of my emotions. And it turns into this nightmarish bog. And I'm seeing one of those, like, bog corpses that's all, like, tanned leather being dragged out. And he's like, that's, that's me. That's me when they caught me. Um, I lost my train of thought, but, uh, oh, okay, okay. He's like, I was going on about my life purpose. Yes, it's more concerning that people are polluting their own emotional waters than it is that they want things. And the message that I can bring in, I've got to get that backbeat in motion. He's talking about the time mastery. It's never too late to shift the energy. The perspective change, the per when you go and look at it from a different angle, you heal it. You take the sting out of the emotion. You take the broken glass out of your eye. You stop smashing the mirror. You're able to see more of the picture. You can walk t 
walk over to the side of the mirror and see that way. You can walk over to the side and see that way. When you take all of, where's that card? When you take all of the glass and break it, you can only see a little bit of it now when you walk over here. When you walk over here, the whole picture is broken up and distorted and you can only see parts of it at any given time. He's, he says when you dredge, you want to switch between dread and dredge. And you may think that you're drowning. All you have to do is put your feet down. It's not as deep as you think. You think you're in the oubliette because it looks like there's a long way up when you're stuck in the lower world. But what you don't realize is if you drop out of your shackles and allow clarity in your water, it's a quick swim to the beach. He's singing, wake me up. Wake me up before you go, go. Don't leave me hanging on like a yo-yo. And he's, he's saying that what he means with that is um, he may not have been illumin an illuminary while he was here. And maybe he didn't wake people up before he left. But he's hanging on. To the lower world. In order to wake people up. He's taken his place at the bottom of the stairs. And he's showing me a bruised ankle. But he's laughing about it. He's like, I bruised my ankle to come down here and, and do this. With his gym shorts and his neon whatever stuff. Okay. He's showing me that his wham uh, set up his wham outfit, like the poofy hair and the shorts and the neons and stuff. This is my maiden phase. This is my maiden voyage. The 90s, with the goatee and the suits and everything. This is... This is my mother. I'm the empress. Or I'm supposed to be the empress. And embodying how when I'm supposed to learn to nurture myself and I gave myself a bottle but it wasn't the right one and when when I he says when I passed I was gray He says, I'm supposed to be the crone, but I wasn't wizened. I was just gray, like diluted. Not diluted, but dilute. Like a, adding white to black to make it gray. Like a, um, a periwinkle is a dilute blue. It's like a pastel. Like a sh which is interesting because a lot of the time if someone's a shade, it means they've lost 
they have a pallor. And shading usually means making darker. But if someone is a shade, they're often ghostly, which means they're pastel. And he thinks that dichotomy is unusual. Okay, is there something you want to wrap this up with? A final, oh, okay. I was going to shuffle these out, but he said forgiveness. And notice how I said pallor, and these are coming in like shades. This like full angel is saying to this person who's still at the bottom of those stairs that came back, they're like, no, no, you can do this. You're doing better than you thought. Forgiveness. Stop focusing your energy on past events for life is too precious to waste. You create your reality, but what you think, dream, and imagine. Okay. Again, it has to do with that perspective shift. If you think you are too damaged, if you think you're too hurt, if you think you're this and that, you need to... You do need to forgive yourself. You're saying, I used to be like this. That doesn't mean I am this. It means I used to be this. You don't have to smash the mirror and hate yourself now for where you are in the journey. It's, it's ever evolving. And he wants me to bring out a certain card. Probably gonna be on the bottom. After dumping out like eight of them. Mm -hmm. The ever unfolding rose cracked open. It's happening for you, not to you. All right? It's not to say that events in your life happen because you're a piece of crap and you deserve it. It's he says it's all a learning experience. I think now of what I would have missed had I not been involved in pain and tragedy and repression and finally release. And what I'm doing now. I can't imagine being able to do this work to help whoever I can uh, can reach, like who's picking up the phone. He's like, whoever joins this Zoom call, because he's been paying attention, whoever joins this Zoom call, everything that I went through is now worth it. And when they realize what they can do, when they clean that mirror, when they dredge that soup, they will realize that it's all part of where they're going. I'm trying to ask him if that's it, and he's just sort of beaming now. Like he's smiling very wide and brightly with his very sharp teeth and his puffy wham hair. He says, have I woken you up now? Which is funny because in order to do this reading, I was in a state of needing much nap. And then I woke up and I had to do this. Which he thinks is really funny. So a, a little bit over a year in the making. And we have finally the channeling of what George Michael has wanted to say. I don't know if he's still going to be haunting me. He said you can count on it. Very funny. <clears throat> All right. I think there's probably other entities that are going to come in wanting channels. I think it's going to be a couple of angels pretty soon. It might be um, Michael and or Metatron again. I might be getting... Um, I don't know if Raphael's going to come in again, but I'm feeling more like maybe like 
Gabriel, Uriel, Ariel, um, somebody else that I'm not that familiar with. Um, it's just, I can feel them starting to gather. Like, where's the, the hell are they? I can feel them sort of coming into the field. So we'll see. I, I don't do channelings unless I'm being poked and prodded and kicked at and demanded to do them. So um, this is why this is finally being done. Um, let me get, there we go. If you want to get a personal reading, you can go ahead and email me the cat came back at camp at gmail.com I have a complete list of readings I offer and how much they cost in the description box of my infomercial video which is going to be linked below this one if you want to get lantern my dark night of the soul poetry kind of book uh, it's available on Amazon through the Kindle direct publishing and it's also um, for Kindle format and then I have two coloring books there, Energy Forms and Draco Forms. Uh, I have prints and merch on Cafe Press and DeviantArt. I have actual art items in my catalog, which I've just updated as of like 24 hours ago. I've got stuffed animals. Mm, stuffed animals. And foam lotuses and other made to order items, commissions, and then a la carte pieces, which are individual drawings and paintings and, and whatnot, as well as the chapbook packs. It's like little mystery oracle type packs. There's little art and, uh, and some of the writing from Lantern in there, right? You know, the chapbook packs are little single sheets folded and printed. There's nine different ones and I don't think I have any printed out right now I'm getting low on printer ink but um it's basically like a sample of this in the chapbook packs and they're all randomized um so all of that is available and then if you want to help keep this channel running so you can see more channelings and tarot readings and my adventures with plastic crack. Um, you can donate their energy exchange tip jar, paypal.me slash cat the minion. I also have Cash App and Venmo. Um, don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, check out my playlists tab, my discussion tab, and uh, stay groovy, and we'll see you later. Bye. And uh, George also says, I'll be seeing some of you sooner than you know. And he's smiling and laughing. He's like, not in a creepy way. He said, pick up the phone. He said, um, get a Wi-Fi. Stop using a modem. Get with the times. He said, I'm fresh. I'm with it. I'm down with the kids. I'm still cool. Is that it? This is the end of the video. We gotta go here. You got you got a minute left, Michael George Michael. If you want to say anything else, uh, he's just he's just singing. Give me a break. Give me a break. Why don't you give me a break? And he's reminding me that people need to have freedom. He says, get a new bathing suit, get some swim trunks, get into that water. Get your scrub brush. Get your waders. Is that it? He says, I'm going to go now. We're going to go ahead and have tea. He's talking about him and his sister. Uh, he's taking his headphone his headphones off in the booth so yes it's it's definitely time to go now all right i'm really going by